This is a new series coming out called Fill in the Blank. How do you like that title? It's a little bit of like a twist on the original series, I guess you would say. But this one focuses more on facts and evidence. I don't have an intro yet. I need an intro. We got to think of one. Let's, want to create a song? You want to create a song right now for the intro? Do do do. Filling in the blank and filling in her. <laughs> that sounds like one of those Rick and Morty things. Like Get Swifty. <laughs> yeah, just like Dan Harmon just makes shit up on the on like, just out of the fucking whim. Well, I do want to introduce who I'm with. This episode's Chris Rourke. He's been on the original podcast and actually a supporter of the podcast. Surprisingly, considering that it's 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 getting out there. At it's least. wonderful, man. I yeah, love. I'm it. I'm glad you had fun on it. So it was a lot of fun. fill in the blank. We're gonna focus this whole segment on Comic Con and the idea of cosplay in general. First of all, what are your thoughts and feelings on Comic Con? Because you, this is something we barely dived into the original podcast, and something you definitely wanted to talk more about. So Comic Con itself, I one of my goals in life is to get there because it is expensive to go to Comic Con. But all of the cons in general, like Comic Con's one of them. There's like the ones that I go to are Otakon, Katsukon, Magfest, and um, those three are close enough by and cheap enough that I can just kind of go, you know, and not have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, I, I love the idea of it because you get just get a bunch of good people who normally wouldn't want to talk to each other inside of a building to do nothing but, like, party for three days. <laughs> so you like, the, you like the conformity aspect of Comic-Con? Well, it's... Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Cause it's, it's really a place where you can be free and be yourself. You can be yourself with no issues because everyone else around you is doing it, you know. So it's kind of like there's no social pressure not to dress up as Mario if you want to. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> you know, a lot of people think Comic-Con is just for, like, comic book geeks and gamers and all that stuff. It's actually a wide variety. It's like a giant convention. Like, they have stuff for um, movies, like, you know, yeah, where, yeah. where new movies get released. But, like... Where people dress up and do this kind of action of like you know just being like putting on a costume in a way much like Halloween in yeah, my mind. Yeah. But like it's when we say it's meant to be free, it's like but it's it's the different outlets too. There's the Star Wars fans, the Star the Trekkies, the Star exactly. Trek people. There's so many outlets there, and it's also a great way for the creators of these shows to come on, answer questions, get to know their actual viewing audience. Even though mm -hmm. if you're a Star Wars fan, we basically got a sense of who you are. Oh, yeah. Um, you're a great individual. But, like, when it comes to... What are you, Star Trek fan? Don't give me that look. Dude, I like Star Wars all the way. All right, good. Just make sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, it's it's cool because they can... They express themselves um, through the art of, like, costume and dressing up, which we'll get into yeah. when we dive into cosplay. But, like, focusing on comic cons, there's so many. There's movie... There's movie con, there's porn con, like people that do like favorite pornos. It's yeah, like, yeah. It seems like anything that is making out there, making money, making a profit, making a, a really a label in a way has a con. It, for it. it doesn't even have to make money though. Like there's one for like adult swingers, like couples that just want to like swing with other couples. You know, like there, it's legitimately like if you can think of something that enough people in this world would like, someone's going to organize an event in an event center to have it happen. And that, that's Scientology. That's what I found out about Scientology. It. Yeah, <clears throat> but <clears throat> there are buildings for that. <laughs> they build. Okay, well, they build also, structures for that. There's also bullshit in that. Yeah, but, no, it's a scam. <laughs> okay, so do you even know where Comic Con originates? Like, give me your idea of where it even started and when do you think it started? So I have no idea on the history. Like, if I was going, I definitely would look it up beforehand. But with my thing is, um, I know the biggest one is normally in San Diego. That is the first and original Comic Con. Actually, in 1970, only 300 people actually showed up on March Dude, 21st. Look at that. And um, surprisingly, that was a great turnout for that time period because a lot of people didn't really like it. wasn't widely, you know, popularized as much as it is as today to mm -hmm. be a gamer nerd. Oh. Or, Dude, Anything they have like, like twelve that. Comic Cons now, and that's just that's just Comic Con. Not even all the other ones, like the anime conventions, the game conventions. Like that's just the original Comic Con spread out across the country, really. You know. And it's it's crazy to think that um, even at that time, like there was there was still gamer nerds. Like there there's always gamer nerds. You got to think in our yeah. grandparents' generation, there was gamer nerds, like people that were just 
I guess hidden in the rafters, you would yeah, have to well, say. Like, like, it wasn't obviously, you know, it was, I mean, I wouldn't say gamer nerds, but people that were into comic books and into reading, just, you know, well, the just fantasy Just geeks tales. in general, you know, yeah. like, and, and they were okay with it. And nowadays, thank God, everyone that I'm around normally is very accepted of, like, that whole thing going on. But a lot of people didn't have outlets when, I'm sure when the original Comic-Con was opened, you know, because stigma or paradigm shift with nerd stuff has definitely made a big change in our culture. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, what's what's more popularized than superhero movies and all this it, type of stuff exactly. that gets played? I mean, video games are such a big outlet in this world. It seems like everyone's trying to... Do you think feel like it's in a sense of everyone's escape from reality in a way? It's, escapism is a hell of a drug, yeah. A lot of people use... I mean, we all use entertainment as escapism. I mean, if it, if it wasn't video games, people use the sports events. You know, that's it's another form of it. People always go into work and then literally the that is thing, the exact definition. Like, thing is to what's the about. difference between a sports fan and a a comic uh, person that dresses up in cosplay? It's you just, got in the sports, you got people dressing themselves up like their mascot, or mm -hmm. they're trying to represent their team symbol, or paint their face, paint their shirt. Yeah, or not paint their shirt, paint their back and paint their yeah, chest. Yeah, well, exactly. They're it's not cosplaying, but it's like you're wearing kind of a costume still, like by doing that. You know, everyone wears the same color. It's it with these what are we, gangs, like everyone's the, the Crips and the it's, Bloods. It's the same thing as high school mentality on a huge, wide scale, and like people just look at high school because there's such a small number of people, and you can easily tell a bunch of mature brains are getting together to do it. But it's like when it comes to full grown adults, like football fans all dress up the same to go to a football game. Um, cosplayers all dress up as their favorite characters and everyone else there gets it because they're at the same con. You know, it's it, it's different but similar on a psychological level, I'd say. I'm just kind of horrible at explaining it because, um, you know, I'm a computer major, not... <laughs> Not a psychology guy. But when you go and you experience co um, Comic-Con, how many have you been to? Um... My first one was, like, in 2012, and then after that, I think I went to around six or seven total now. Is there anything, any tips or advice that you'd give to someone that has never been to Comic-Con before? Because I know you're trying to get me into that world, Dude, and I'm just like, I'm nervous about it, but I'm like, I'm it's, in a good way. To each their own. I'm, a, I'm the type of, so my sister really likes to plan stuff, and she is super fucking smart, and... You know, if there isn't a plan, you know, she'll make one, right? Mm -hmm. There's an app called Guidebook for people like that, and it legitimately shows you every single panel, like, event inside of the convention center that you can go to, and um, what time they're happening. You can schedule them, it'll give you an, alar an alert, and if you try to schedule over another one, it'll tell you. It's very nice, um, but for those who just like to go with the flow, honestly, just... Don't worry about talking to people, even though there might be a bunch of introverts in the room. They are very cool with talking about their costume. Because, I mean, you're just paying them mad respects and you're like, dude, I love it. Well, you know, like, that's all you have to say. And they're like, dude, all those hours I spent are worth it now. Thank you. Well, much you know? like um, I compare uh, Comic-Con to, you know, with the idea of having a plan. Um, I compare it to just like when you're having a baby. Um, well, you want to have a set plan. Like, oh, I'm going to have this doctor, I'm going to have this... And the true fact of the matter is, none of it works out. Nope. Your plan does not go, anything happens. All this stuff starts flying. It's just like when you're trying to have a baby, and then next thing you know, the doctor's not available, the doctor's on vacation because the baby's coming early. It's like, you literally, Comic Con's your baby, and it's like you have this plan set out to go, you know, pursue, like, we're going to do this at a certain time, do this at a certain time. All that gets thrown out the window. Mm -hmm. You're basically on your feet constantly. And, like, this is where, um, basically, where the the 14 rules kind of come down to um, an article like published by you know, experienced comic book goers talk about how you know you want to figure out what experience you want I mm -hmm. guess from Comic Con so what do you when you hear that what do you immediately think of like do you think of like, like just, what experience you want yeah do you think of like just how many factors and stuff come to play when it comes to Comic Con no, you I know mean, you gotta, you, I know a lot of people probably do but like, because there's no way you can get it all done in one session. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, and that's the thing. I don't. I used to stress about it, and I'm also not a planner, right? I've known I'm not a planner, but for whatever reason, I thought planning for it would be a good idea. Um, after about five cons, I said fuck it, and 
I just started going with the flow. And those were like the best times for me, you know. But some people, they go to these events and, and they have they're like, I want to go out. see this, yeah. you know. And it's like, cool, good for you. I've just been like, I'll talk to this person. They'll tell me, hey, karaoke is in five minutes. It's like, bring me along. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's the way I've been doing it recently, you know, just meeting planners and then going along with them. Because well, when we much say easier. when we say and we look at um like what what do you want out of your experience? Do you want to experience the music? Because there's cool. concerts going on. Magfest. Yeah, you got to talk Lots about of that. Concerts, so dude. what's Magfest exactly? It's video games and music, like video games, and music and video games. And you witnessed right? a band that used dude played like a hardcore rock version of all the retro game themes yeah, and all that type of stuff. See, a, I listened in the podcast. They had a drummer. Yeah, they had a drummer that like. Um, he was able to play these crazy fast, like, have you ever heard the Half-Life 2 soundtrack? Yes. The crazy fast, like, chase scenes with like, like, they're hitting symbols. He's hitting symbols that he shouldn't be able to hit. Like, you're not even seeing his, his freaking arms move, and he's like just a like... a millisecond, you're like, oh, he's yeah, hitting it. Yeah, he's, he's going. He's crazy. And, like, these guys were nuts, so I was nearly blacked out, and I met every one of the band members beforehand. And then while they were playing, like, I had this sobering up awakening moment when I saw them playing because of how damn good they were. And it's like, I did that for free, other than, like, the con ticket. Like, they didn't charge for admission at the door, you know? It's like, you buy the con ticket, I I buy it to enter the con and have fun with people. And then everything else that happens is just extra for me. How much is the average cost for the ticket? Magfest is, like, 85 Right, so but it's for four days, right? It's for all four days, and it's um, if you buy it on Saturday, it gets cheaper. If you buy it on Sunday, there's not really a point because everyone goes home then. Mm-hmm. But it's like dirt cheap on Sunday, so um, you know, it, it, and at Magfest, they don't have people checking for badges, it's just I like to support them. Um, the other two I go to do check for badges, so you kind of have to get them in order to enjoy the whole experience of like people and everything. But, um, yeah, the ticket's really just for me to get through the door normally. It's not even... I, I barely go to panels unless people tell me about them. Well, you got to have a plan, too, when you go. Um, you want to make sure, like, if you're going f- one day, you want to spend listening to the music there, spend a day doing that. Like, you can't go and try and get all aspects in a day, and the next thing you know, you're going to be broke yeah. by day one, and you're not going to make it to day four. And it's like all these... It, they talk about the expense when it comes to Comic-Con. Comic-Con, like the San Diego one this past year, just raised $20 million dollars. Spent three point five million dollars in just setting everything up, and then four million dollars for the next event coming up there. So they take, but they took an average revenue of twenty million dollars home. They made way more than that, but with costs and everything, it comes out. And I'm like, that's a big profit margin. That is a huge profit margin. And you know what that comes from? What? The sales on all that anime merchandise. The merch. I was I was gonna say the merch, dude, but I didn't know if like. I don't know if the badge made him money. I feel like the badge is to cover costs because other than that... The badge just the, goes to the convention. That's part of probably the 3.5 it, that gets spent in I'm going thinking, into the I'm place. thinking the badge price is probably, okay, all the money from the badge is going to whatever we spent. And then, like, with an estimate, we're going to have X amount of people. But I talked to a bunch of dealers because business computer major, A. Hey. So I, um, I talked to a bunch of the dealers, and they were like... They tell me that they pay per day around like $150 just to be there. And then some of them have to give a percentage of their profits. Like, that's pretty crazy. That's crazy amounts of money, especially when you think of a Comic-Con. They're probably paying around six, seven hundred at a huge event like that per day for that space. And depending on how big that big concrete room that they try to stuff everyone into is, it's a lot of money. You know what I mean? You know what's crazy is all the actors and um, stuff like that that get in trouble for signing photographs and then taking like garbage bags of money home because mm-hmm. they're, they're basically walking out of the door with like up to upwards of like thousands of dollars. Like Norman Reedus was one of the people that actually got in trouble from that. With someone from The Walking Dead, and then the guy that plays um, in the in the TV series Arrow. The guy yeah. that plays on um, the Green Arrow, he got in some massive trouble for that, where they almost banned him from one of the Comic Cons and stuff. But it's like he's making money and doing it in his way, and it's not going to them, so they're feeling like, exactly. hey, you know, Uncle he Sam was a piece. He didn't pay for the booth, so they're going to be pissed off. Even though he probably, he probably didn't buy the booth to begin with because he was like, I want to walk out of here with X amount of money, and then 
when he was looking at the price of the thing, he's like, I'm going to have to charge people like 50 bucks for a signing. I don't want to do that to my fans. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> he's probably like, I can charge people $5 and make twice as much as I was going to. You can charge fifty dollars. Fifty bucks. I take a picture with Captain Kirk for fifty bucks. I mean, I'm not a Star Trek fan, but it's Captain Kirk, man. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, they probably they do it for. I, I would say two motives because all depending on how they're looking at it. If they're doing it just for the money, then you know maybe they're just doing that. But I'd like to think that there was a second alternative motive in there and saying like, I would rather charge my fans five dollars instead of fifty. Do you, you know, think it's ridiculous that someone would save up like their whole year's worth of pay to go to yes. Comic Con and then blow it in a couple days? Yes. Or do you see it as like that's what they're into, so you can't really complain? But uh, you I, would never, obviously. I think, like to each their own. At the same time, though, like there's so many damn cons, dude. Like, w what I do is normally I, I don't think about what I'm spending when I'm there. But at the same time, I know I'm going to cheap comics. That is the worst thing. That's the worst idea, like, to not think about what you're going to be spending there because you got to ration out your money. Next thing you know, well, I mean, you're buying, like, $50, $60 worth is, of memorabilia. No, I don't. My th it's not like that. I'm saying, like, I don't go to the dealer's room in Artist Alley and ever buy anything. Like, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. Nowadays, I mean, like, when I'm out with my friends and we're You're there hungry. for the aesthetic appeal. I'm there for the people. I don't buy things much anymore. Well, yeah. I, I knew that sense about you, but I'm talking about other people that spend so much money on, like, their first day, and they're broke, and they're like, I don't even know how I'm going to eat tonight. Like, yeah. You know? But, like, when I see you go, you're in it to see all these cosplayers, which I'm, we're going to talk about cosplay mm -hmm. for sure, because that... For many people that don't know out there, it's called costume play. It's a Japanese, some type of... I guess slang it's just, word for yeah, it's it's what up. what they made up for dressing up as your favorite character from a video game, anime, movie, etc. You know. Now, why do you think it's when you think of like um, cosplay or just like kind of video games in general? Why does that immediately go to China or some type of Asian ethnicity? Because the Asians do it best. I mean, look at look at every Nintendo game ever. Has there ever been a bad one? Pac Man. Pac Man was a bad game. No, I mean, I mean, it's a good game. I mean, that was, like, one of the games, though. Yeah, no, I'm saying, like, if you look at all their games, like, they have no bad game. And why is that? Because they have a Japanese fucking genius developing all their shit. Yeah, it's I mean, <laughs> Nintendo makes mistakes every now and again. Like, the one American game that was probably the most tedious, and I look at it, and I'm like, I would never play this in a million years, even if this was the only game out there. We invented Pong. We did invent Pong. That's ridiculous. You can see the American guy that creates Pong and the Chinese guy that creates Pac-Man. You're like, yeah, oh, dude. The f they're yeah, way dude. ahead of us this in that. It's kind of a big difference. <laughs> they're, in, they're a little bit more innovative. Like colored sprites? What? Dude, Since it's ridiculous. What? And then you got to think of like, that became a, a, a pastime back in mm -hmm. the day. Like, what, what's the one thing that was in every single diner? The arcade machines, dude. What's still around to this day? I mean, dude, I rarely <laughs> see them, but when you see them, you got to play Space Invaders or something. Like, See, that's why you love MAGFest, too, though, because MAGFest has an entire two two of, like, the dealer room size rooms full of arcade games that people volunteer to bring. Would it's you make a movement to br start bringing those back? in like restaurants and like having an old actual style arcade yeah but it's not really like our decision like it if they went out of their way to buy an old arcade machine it would cost them around like two hundred dollars for like a mint one and then it wouldn't bring in any more revenue well see we got the newer stuff like dave and busters where you got like the ones where you're like riding yeah. bikes those are cool and stuff but i want the old feel of the joystick in the hand mm -hmm. like you know no sexual reference intended but like <laughs> But, like, the, the tapping of the buttons and feeling like if you, you know, you're playing Mortal Kombat or something on mm -hmm. one of those old machines, it's just like when you're playing your Xbox. You're hitting the button harder, thinking your guy's going to punch harder. You can't tell me when you're playing Madden NFL or something and you hit that hit stick, you f flip that joystick oh, it's up. satisfying as fuck. Dude, yeah, you there's... slam that thing hard thinking your player's going to hit harder just because you're pushing it on your controller harder. And when you can just hit it lightly and it would do something like that. Like, but you know what? The enthusiasm might have made you win that round. That's what I'm saying. When it comes to the enthusiasm, like you can see where like people say it's ridiculous to spend that much money at one of those events. It's like... That's their that's what that's their kick. That's their niche. Yeah. That's what they go down and chase after, man. Well, and that's I like the people who go there. Like you can't go anywhere in this world other than an anime convention and meet so many good people. Like, and 
it's all those good people coming for like a nerdy cause that I can actually talk about. Like you're all there for on. the same thing, and it's like yeah. everyone can release their inner freak in a way where mm-hmm. they might feel like that in society or something like in public that they might feel like people are going to be disen disenvowing, I guess, in a way, which is crazy because it it brings to the whole thing of like conformity, like how we have goth groups and all this stuff in school it's like there's a literally a, a place that you can go or you can literally it's a, it's called a nerd safe haven you know that's what it is well it's literally yeah. like you can be as free as you want if you're a movie geek you know any of those types of stuff you get to meet your heroes it's literally yeah. heaven on earth it is really cool and i mean that's the that's like if you go to the rave there you get to see what people are like really like and it's like they are in, like, the con, they're all, like, contained. They have their cosplays very civilized. And then you wait until, like, nighttime when the alcohol hits and then the rave opens up. Shit gets fucking wild. Glow there, sticks dude. come out. People Glow start sticks come out. shit. I have heard, and this might just be rumors, but at least one orgy a day happens at these things, too. I believe it. Like, I... I, I really, really... I was like, every time I see that it was there, it's like... How did I not hear about this happening? Because, like, this is something that I would totally, like, poke my head into and be like, this isn't a myth. Like, this is happening right now in a fancy hotel. All right, we've all had a crush on the girl from X-Men, the blue girl. Yeah. I'm pretty sure everybody's had a fantasy, at least if Mm -hmm. you're a nerd about her. You can't tell me if you see a hot-ass girl dressed up as that at Comic-Con. Yeah, there's shit going down. (sighs) There is. There's shit going down, but I would... Definitely try to talk it into banging a, uh, in the rafters. I, I would try to talk it into a one-on-one situation, not a uh, you know, oh, three sweaty nerdy guys and like one blue girl. You know, <laughs> that's not something that I'm down for. I want to know the people that get freaky about a, a girl dressed up as an Ewok. They're out there. That was, that was a are... whole movie with like George Lucas, where those guys broke onto George Lucas's farm to steal the secret <laughs> tapes of Star Wars, and the dude banged a, a girl that was dressed up as an Ewok. Dude, all right, so how many painted vans do you see at Comic-Con? You have to see a bunch of those things. I feel like they would have their own parking lot where it would be, like, just for people to look at. Because that's, like, the stereotypical nerd uh, in my mind. See, is like I someone actually, with a unicorn and a dude riding, like, or, like, some Thundercats or some You type of definitely bone. just pointed out something that I actually have never looked to before. Like, I don't really look at people's shoes too often, believe it or not. It's, like, I, I don't... That's why everyone, some people are like, look immediately at your shoes and see what they wear. Yeah. Like, there's a certain ethnicity that focuses mainly on your looks of your shoes and stuff like that, where <laughs> you're just like, what? Like, why are you looking down at that? And it's like, that's not in your realm. That's not in your world. I, I just, like, first thing I look at normally is face. Yeah. And then, like, if it's a cosplay, you know, like, those things, you're not going to not look at the entire cosplay, of course. But it's okay. like... okay. So when it comes to cosplay, let's get on this. Yeah, subject. that subject. Cosplay is, a great one. is very, very stigmatized because a lot of people like it. Actually, inspired protests um, by the West Baptist Church um, in San Diego every year so far since 2010. There has been uh, the West Baptist Church out in front saying that there it's a sign of prostitution, and it's also a sign of God doesn't want you to dress up in this way. He's basically saying. Um, God does not like fags. That was one of their signs that they hung up at the the um, yeah, protest. Yeah, a lot of which a lot of a gay lot of people, people off. A lot of gay people do go there, and all of them are sweethearts. I've met like twenty gay dudes like that weekend there's, alone. There's sometimes the and they're very people. cool, yeah. you know. But um, the if they're gonna be dicks about it, I say you know you all can fucking burn in hell, you know? Well, it's so funny but. because um, when you go to, like, usually when it's like a protest or a riot, there's a small group of people, then everyone's not really conformed in society. So everyone's not together in like, being against these people that are protesting. They just kind of mm-hmm. walk by in little small groups. So there's people that are doing the protest seem like the big, the big group, the big movement. But you go to a Comic-Con, you pull that yeah. off, all those people are there, and you're trying to tear down their nerd, their nerding out, like, days... Dude, they're all getting up against you, and they're they're pushing you out. Literally, there's literally security guards protecting the people that are protesting. The, the because... security guards will be confrontational about it. I might be because most of the time when I'm at these things, I am drunk. But like the the average con goer is actually surprisingly like non confrontational. Even if like they're there somebody... to have an experience, they're there to see their heroes, not freaking worry about what you're up to. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm just saying like, if that happened, I don't know what would happen because like 
there's even YouTube channels of dudes going around trolling, and everyone has such a good spirit about it. You know what I mean? Like, no one gets mad about much. I mean, it's nothing like saying fags should burn in hell. Like, that. that's kind of a thing that you don't say in general. <laughs> you know, like, if you disagree with it, disagree with it. Don't don't tell these people how to live their life. Well, you know, focus on the gay aspect of it. But, like, I mean, the fact that, like, I, in I'm talking about I'm, security guards are protecting the protesters oh. because there's such a big outbreak of... You're, it, it'd be like me and you going into a church and letting them like saying your god's not real yeah you know that's how, not cool you know how secluded we're going to be everyone is going to either beat us up and throw us out like they're walking onto the nerd territory in a way now hopefully that's not like that's not offensive but it's like they're walking onto the geek territory and they're this small group, but you got all these people that are all into the same thing mm -hmm. all together at once. Yeah. And you're trying to tell them that their thing is anti... They're going go no, to go yeah, to I mean, they I'm get, just saying... Dude, they one, get beat up. One little thing that would piss people off enough to get violent would be the gay thing. You start making fun of the entire community. It's just... You start pushing your views on somebody else. You're just already le legitimately at, shooting at, yourself in the foot. At these things, it is like a human heaven. Like, because everyone knows that everyone loves the same shit there... And everyone honestly has a similar personality there, like, one way or another. There's legitimately no, like, gay, straight, black, white, any of that shit. Like, I know that sounds like a fucking fantasy, but that truly is how it is, because it's kind of like... People are painted blue and red there after it, it, their favorite it, it, superhero. I, you know, I was actually going to go to Comic-Con one time in Baltimore. Um, I was going to go dressed up as uh, Iceman or Leonidas. I don't think it was Comic-Con in Leonidas general. Leonidas would be sweet, dude. If... Wait, that's the one that can has movies too, right? Comic Con. Comic Con is just pop culture conventions. So. Yeah, I was gonna dress up as Leonidas with the six pack and all that. Mm -hmm. Got real shredded for it, and was like, I'm just gonna go there and just there basically go, take my shirt off. Yeah, that's the con chad. <laughs> Got a con chad on people, dude. There's the comic contradictions. Oh, <laughs> how do you like that? Look at that, putting in some stupid references. Yeah, dude. No, people get like. Like, you know how actors, like, to bulk for, like, movie roles? like They'll, they'll do it for Comic-Con. They'll do it for Comic-Con and shit, too. It's crazy. You know, what, you know what's crazy? Huh. Is I think of Comic-Con as crazy. Like, oh, my God, it's a place for nerds. But then I'm learning more about it and I'm understanding more. And then I start realizing I'm obsessed with bodybuilding and going into bodybuilder, like, conventions and stuff. What's the difference in that? You think those gamers don't see the... It's because, you know why? It's how society views people. <laughs> that's you see it, a man. dude ripped with muscles and you look at a guy that's wearing a freaking xbox or sony t-shirt and he's overweight and he's nerded out in the classic nerd look like mm -hmm. that's immediately what you think of comic-con you think of a bodybuilding competition you think of like arnold and all these people impressive that's impressive to in society's eyes that's just because we're all focused on looks and how people should be yeah. a certain way mm -hmm. well that stems from not to get into this but i will have another episode for fill in the blank on ancient greece that's happening i need to find someone who's super into that but like all the statues of the Greek gods. We've always envisioned somebody with like they're not even that ripped though, like compared to what we have today. But it's like we've envisioned yeah. this perfect image of a body for so long that's been just f influenced through our society. And then you look at gamer people and see that as a whole downfall. It's much like I talked about with you before on the, the original podcast, where yeah. um, you see the guy that's forty years old picking up a 48 can pack of Mountain Dew and a bunch of like gaming fuel basically. Mm -hmm. like yeah, dude, he's having a good night. He's having a good <laughs> night. You remember that. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 I know. It's Man's a genius. It's, um, it's all about, I think, there's like the shallow part, which is perfectly fine. If people don't say that they're shallow, they're fucking lying. What makes you get Everyone's into a, shallow, what makes you get into a relationship about. with someone to get deeper with them? You don't say like, wow, I bet that person has a good personality. You know, you're like, that chick is hot. I'm going to go talk to her. Okay, this brings to the fact of the Me Too movement. I don't mean to cut you off, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you know about this, but it started around 2015. Even Chris Hardwick from Talking Dead and yeah. all that stuff had to come out and actually make a speech at the San Diego Comic Con in 2015 about this. Um, a bunch of people were uh, feeling like uh, that they were being sexually harassed by others for dressing up in their costume and ways, feeling that they're not going to be free. I have two thoughts on that, and they're both on different sides. One, if you're dressing up as Princess Leia, and you're dressing up as some type of, you know, you're, you know, that's barely showing any, like, 
You know, I mean, that's showing a lot, but barely has any clothing on, and you're dressing mm. up sexual like that. Whether you're a guy or a girl, you can't be surprised if someone's going to want to come up and then, you know, flirt with you. But it should be taken as it does not give you the right to touch them. No, that is a whole different. See, it, with that, there's like two sides of it, right? It's like, I just wanted to dress up as Princess Leia, leave me alone, right? And that's cool, but you have to tell, you have to learn how to tell people, fuck off. You know, even if you're... I'm not even going to say politely, because if a big sweaty nerd is going to come talk to you, just tell him fuck off. You know, if you don't want that attention, you don't want that attention. Like, hey, I'm not into that. Sorry. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is a very polite way to do it. But what's, but, cr what's crazy is the a fact that, like, a lot of those people that are really, like, into video games and doing this, they're so used to, like, you know, like, the, the stereotypical, like, you know, like, porn, all that type of stuff. And, like... Well, that's the they're, only they're female very, interaction Well, they, they have secluded... Like, um, like you know, I guess what what would be the word? I guess secluded. viewpoints, not viewpoints, but like this hidden monster that's kind of like, hey, like it, they're demon, they're a little freak. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They yeah. have this little like so many sexual lusts and all this stuff, mm -hmm. and then they go out in the public, they can't control it. It's much like when you're a kid and you're going through puberty and you randomly getting these, you know, erections. Yeah, and stuff. the, the like, wind the blows. This shit? <laughs> the wind blows, and it's like what? Can't control it, but like <laughs> they literally physically, it's it's a lot of like sexual like you know, abusers and people like that, they get, like, rape charges on them. It's like, I'm not, uh, you know, bringing that into Comic-Con, but at the same time, it's like, there's these people with these hidden secrets about them that they might not even know themselves that just come out in Comic-Con where, like, you see a girl revved up and ready to go, and then you're so used to the scenarios you play out with your own imagination that you feel like you can just go up there and touch them if they want, and you got to realize you're that's not how the world works. Yeah, yeah, well, I, especially if you don't get any interaction like, like, well, you get some, but, like, not yeah. on a daily basis. You don't get... That's uh, why I say, even if you're taking small strides to even open up the door to pay for a pizza, yeah. that's enough human interaction to where you're not going to go freaking nuts. Like, we can't just build a bunker and then live in it for the rest mm -hmm. of our lives. You know, even the the, the show The Last Man on Earth. Or yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Dude, that, that guy went nuts after a while. Like, you're going to have too. fun for, like, the first month, and eventually you're going to be like, I'm freaking alone, and Dude, this is how life's like, going to be. It would be, like, two hours of me having fun, and then it'd be like, yo, I wonder what my boy... Oh. <laughs> you yeah, know? Like, just, like, the sudden realization. Oh. Like, everyone talked about the zombie apocalypse. Oh, it'd be so great. You wouldn't have to worry about bills. You wouldn't have to worry about this. I'm like, yeah, but you have to worry about so many other factors that you just take for granted. Yeah. You got to worry about hygiene. Bill? Dude, not even, like... Finding your food. Hygiene is one thing. Having a decent, well-balanced meal. Could you imagine not eating healthy? Like, all you have is potato chips for a week. Your hair is falling out and you don't have teeth anymore. Like, <laughs> your body can't function on just that. Like, you need basic nutrients as a human being. The good part you know? for me would be, like, I could just stop working out and then I could just not give a shit. Like, oh, that's probably where you just don't give a shit what you look like. You don't even need to comb yeah. your hair anymore. There's no point. Like, you'd be combing your hair one day and you'd be like, wait, why the hell am I doing this? I'm the only person on earth. Like, what the fuck? Like, who am yeah, I exa looking good for? Yeah, exactly. Then well, you walk that would by. be Dude, a I weird guarantee realization. You, I guarantee to you, though, you'll walk by a mirror and still care. Yeah, because at the same time, you, you're saying, oh, I wouldn't have to work out anymore. Are you really working out so people can see you differently or are you working out for yourself? Are you asking me? I'm asking you. It's um, something actually, we're all focused on how other people view us. We Whether are. Whether we know it or not, we, we are, are 100%. Way, there is not another. a single person out there that doesn't care. That have, that we, we're always comparing ourselves to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So in that aspect, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at like what how people look at me. I don't really do it. I used but to at, do at it for fun. But at the same time, your workout routines are probably a gray area because there's like... There's not just the, oh, what people look at me as, but it also makes me feel great. I like looking at myself in the mirror. You know, it definitely like releases stress. It does release stress. And, like, you don't have to be self-centered to look in the mirror every now and again. Like, when you hop out the shower and you're like, dang. You know what the <laughs> no. funny thing is? I don't even look at myself when I get out of the shower. What? Yeah, isn't that nuts? I'm, like, against looking in the mirror. Why? Only when I have clothes on. Why? Dude, if I could shower with a shirt, I'd do it. Why? I know, I have the six pack and I just, I don't know, in my eyes, like, it's a lot when you deal with, like, body dysmorphia or something, you get a little... I got you, I got you. It's like gender dysmorphia, like, they, they, they just don't feel comfortable in their skin, even mm -hmm. though, like, I'm constantly working to improve myself and stuff like that, but it's like, 
you know, you got to take it in strides, man. Slowly, you got to get better in a way. Mm -hmm. But, like, when you look at, like, costume and dressing up, I've always been obsessed with that aspect because I've been real obsessed with LARPing, which we've talked about before. But, like, the live-action role-play for people that don't know what that is. They have those. Just Yeah, at, <laughs> at Warwick. I'm surprised the school I go to has a live-action role-play where people play, like, Dungeons & Dragons. That's a fun aspect. I remember that one game. What's that one game that came out? Uh games hero scape or something like that where you had the little pieces you had to set out was like little tiles that are different colors you got like monks and people like that were like little statues and robots and stuff and you had to move them and roll dice and stuff that was a fun thing it's it was you know it was like monop it was our monopoly it was the nerd monopoly like people look at monopolies like that's a family game mm -hmm. why do we look at that as a family game and then look at dungeons and dragons as like that's for people that want to be a freaking wizard or a warlock like so what? That's basically our modern day Monopoly. Do you even mm -hmm. know how Monopoly was created? No, I. It was I meant to that. show off how bad capitalism is. That's really? literally what it started really? out to be. It was meant to show that badness of capitalism. Then it became a family board game where kids are like, "I love owning property and making my parents broke." When was that made? Monopoly. Yeah. Do you know? Ah, oh, dude, I couldn't. Because like, if it, it off. was during the whole like, if it was during the Cold War. That'd be some crazy propaganda shit, because now it's in every single fucking household. It's literally like, I don't I don't know anybody that doesn't own a certain type of Monopoly, whether it's, it's Spongebob Monopoly, I'm whether saying, it's Marvel Comics it's Monopoly. It's It was actually created in 1935. It was first marketed on a broad scale by the Parker Brothers. It was a standard edition small black box with a separate board and larger deluxe edition with a box large enough to hold the board were sold in the first year of Parker Brothers' so that ownership. Was, that was like beginning of World War II that this came out. That's crazy. I'd, I'd figure. I was thinking maybe Cold War conspiracy. It was I think literally that cool as fuck, to but. promote economic theories of Henry George and the monopolist work. There you go. Capitalism. Well, I, I mean, capitalism is just if you can screw someone out of something to make your own gain. And you, you know will. what's funny? Huh. Is people are like, they just went off on a tangent about Monopoly. It's a game, bro. Much like Pac-Man. Yeah. It's just like that. But you don't see booths at Comic-Con for Monopoly. Catch sadly. me at MAGFest. I'm going to be dressed up as the dog from Monopoly. <laughs> right? <laughs> you should kidding. be the Monopoly I'm man. With yeah. The freaking, hey. Monopoly man. And uh, I'm going to carry around one of my shorter friends as the Monopoly money bag. <laughs> Catch Dude, me you dress up as Monopoly man and I'll dress up as... Uh, the, the peanut. The planner's peanut. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Capitalism at its finest. Fucking peanuts and Monopoly, man. That's the combination. What was the treat you would have when you were sitting... What is your gaming snack, dude? I gotta ask you that. Because there's a wide variety of when I ask people what their gaming snacks are. I'll be honest with you. I rarely eat when I'm gaming. It's because you're so focused in. Time I'm flies so by. focused in. I used to, like... Middle school days, I forgot to eat some days. It's just like... Yeah, my dad had to come up and feed me sometimes. He was mm -hmm. like, look, you haven't eaten in like two days, dude. Like, here's a PB&J and some Doritos, and here's a soda. It's like, it's, like, it's accidental. It's accidental. Cause your it's your like, mind's so occupied, mm -hmm. you're you're not even... You're, plus, your body just ends up slowing down. It's like you're sleeping. Exactly, yeah. So, it's like, do you really need to The only thing that's moving is your you know? brain and your reflexes on your fingertips. The next thing you know, you're able to go downstairs and you know, rattle off a freaking Rubik's Cube in, like, two minutes. <laughs> yeah, dude. Get your fucking mind to third gear, man. And we talk about costumes and people, you know, the Me Too movement. Like, that's a that's a crazy thing to think about, that there's even people out there that get, like, they're trying to feel comfortable in a way that they can feel comfortable. Because you should feel comfortable. You're around people yeah, well, just like and, you, and then people take advantage of that, of others, thinking they can group and do whatever they want onto other people. And that, it's, that's it's been a big thing. Horrible. And then there's also the attention seekers. Giving, well, see now, but giving compliments, even to someone who doesn't want them, they, they'll sit back and think about that when they go home. Because most people go to these things, right? Or the, I met a few, you know. They, they don't, they say they don't like the way they look and it's just like if i tell them like girl you fine in that they're they're like they're looking for the attention th they're like no i d i don't blah 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 even if they say they don't want it in the moment or they don't like it in the moment they will feel better about themselves at the end of the day and what does yeah. it bother me because i got to see a hot girl and call Dude, they're hot, fishing for you know? compliments it's stuff i do too sometimes i'll 
when you put up that Instagram picture and you got the six pack, it's like you're, you're obviously fishing for some likes, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, like I just... said, we're always looking to impress in society. We're always mm-hmm. looking to impress and oppress. Because it's... The impress part is fun no matter what you do. I yeah. mean, if you... If... Dude, the amount of money people spend in costumes and go all yes. out on that. And then, did you hear about the guy that won, um, I think it was like in 2008, uh, at the San Diego Comic Con, which is like basically where all the facts come from, San Diego is being one of the largest events. Like, he won the competition for dressing up as Iron Man, building this nice-ass suit, and then he actually had to give the award back and the money that he got for it back because what happened was he copied it off the original Iron Man suit. Not the superhero Iron Man, the Iron... That, that original basis... Isn't that ridiculous? Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. The original Iron Man, you mean as in like... The tin guy. That dude. Really? He copied his Iron Man suit. It was... He knew the guy that played in the actual movie, apparently. And he took the suit's originality of it, like the basis of it, like the actual like first creation. That's insane. And he had to give the award back because he used actual like... Well, but, I mean, what's using schematics, though? I mean, in my opinion, I think if there is a design online... Well, the whole point of the competition was it's something you created and you invented. So he used the original schematics. He used the original schematics for it. So it's like... Mm. Did he build it? No. Okay, well then, yeah, no, fuck it then. Fuck him. That's that's not good. He might have improved a couple things. Like, you know, if I, you know, I can't put a, a sticker on my car and say, oh, this is the car I built. Like, yeah, you know I mean? yeah. Like, there's someone else's name, mm-hmm. someone else's hard work. Yeah, you know, I, I understand, I understand. Yeah, but um, actually, I want to go back to, you said impression and oppression. Yeah. What do you mean by oppression? There are some people that feel like that they can only release themselves when it comes to going to Comic-Con. Like, they're just oppressed through society throughout the years. And uh. they feel like... Sometimes, even when they're there, like it feels like they have to go to a couple comic cons before they can officially open up and not really feel like uncomfortable. But once they get the vibe, like it's much like when you when you get like a brand new phone or something, you drop the case and you get a scratch on the screen, you end up not caring. You know, you're not as you know worried about it as much. Like when you have a brand new phone, you're like, I gotta keep this in my pocket, make sure it's set on the table. You don't set it off the corner of ledges and stuff like that. You mm-hmm. make sure it's sent centered in the table and so there's no way it can fall over you don't have any drinks by it. and then after yeah. a little while you get used to it and you get comfortable with it it's the same thing when you go to comic con you open up and have this vibe and especially I you gotta you. you gotta really gotta go into the mindset of like you're here experiencing the same thing everyone else is trying to experience and you know you just you're trying to make the best out of it as possible you obviously want to have a kind of a strategy of going in there but it's not going to work out and at the same time when we go down to the costume idea when it comes to, first of all, even doing dressing up in this costume, I feel like you want to dress as comfortable as possible because you're literally on your feet for hours. Well, that's the first thing that. they talk about. You think no, that's that. the first fact, though, when it comes out to comfortability. You're going to be on your feet half the time yeah, if you're a people normal People compromise that goer. all the time, though. How? There's people who legitimately... I saw some girl walking around as Kindred from League of Legends. It's like... A lamb, so like with like a bent foot. So she was walking around like this, except it's so unnatural because she had to put her feet foot into something, and then there was a hoof, like some Chinese foot binding. She was legitimately walking around on on stilts, essentially, but like heeled stilts. So her foot was up, and the and the thing was right here under her foot. I can't really describe it you, for the viewers. You but. know what my understanding for that is, though. Huh. Is that um, you're willing to go through the amount of pain in your body. Like when we say like how we play video games, we completely yeah, ignore yeah, the yeah. sense of being hungry. You completely ignore the sense of being in pain when you're dressed up as your favorite icon and you're mm-hmm. getting all these attention. Like, people oh, like, that's a wonderful costume. You just don't even realize how bad your feet hurt until you get back to the hotel room, take the costume off, and you're sitting there like, I can't fucking walk. I walked miles in my Link cosplay. I used my sister's shoes. She's like a girl size six. I... Uh, th- I was fucking destroyed because I didn't have any horse riding boots. <laughs> I don't keep those things around. Yeah. I didn't want to buy any, so like, I was like, oh, it's almost con time. Let me borrow those. I was walking around in the middle of the summer. Our hotel room was like 10 blocks away, and I walked back and forth from that thing like five times in the same day just to keep grabbing shit. 
I mean, and it, it's just like you're in a burlap sack for Link. You know, like it, underneath his, he has like five layers of tunic. One of them is a burlap sack. And I was wearing these tiny ass boots. I got back to the hotel and I was like, fuck, what did I just do all day? Like, you exactly, really do lose yeah. it. Like, you do lose it until the end. I mean, I tell when I go hard in a workout, and next thing you know, I'm like, ow, like something's not working mm-hmm. right. Like, my foot's messed up. Yeah. I'm like, it's hard to walk. <laughs> I'm trying to walk. I'm like, why is this hurting? I'm like, oh, yeah, because when I was working out, it hurt a little bit before, and then I completely ignored it because I was so focused on what I was doing. It was it's like, like, just work through the pain. Exactly. And next thing you know, it's like, now your foot has to be amputated. You're going through stage three diabetes or something. It's like, like work, th- work through, like play through the hunger, right? Like, and then the next thing you know, it's like, wow, I'm passing out right now. What the fuck's happening? Oh yeah, I haven't eaten for forty eight hours. <laughs> you know, there was, it, there's crazy to think how far people go just with the costumes, but how far people will go to get a seat. I don't know if you knew too much about when the Ravens brought home the Super Bowl trophy um, to the ring, dude. In the first thirty minutes before the Ravens even got there. There were people getting stabbed for seats. Now, this actually happened at Comic-Con. A man was stabbed with a ballpoint pen because apparently he was sitting in the guy's seat and the guy said, find another seat. And his response was, this is the best seat in the room. Apparently, because of acoustics, he was copying Sheldon Cooper off the Big Bang Theory, where we talk about nerds. Why is that a thing, man? He fucking role-played? And stabbed a guy because of the no, role he play? wasn't role playing, but that's that's what I, I, I amounted to. Like, that oh scene. yeah, yeah, like he was actually like this is my spot, but the guy was like, this is like, my d- spot. I'm and about then, good sound we see too. That but... is ridiculous. But then we look at like um, like somewhere in Baltimore where someone gets stabbed over a seat for a sporting event, and we're like, that's just Baltimore's crime rate. Like that's just the influence down there. But then we look at that and we're like, that did that nerd really go that far? Did he go that ridiculous to stab a freaking mm-hmm. person? It's like. You gotta understand, they're that's their that's their outlet. That's mm-hmm. their you know that's their moment too. That's but their like, football game. Like, I don't think you should go stabbing people with pens. I mean, I think we all have been in the grocery store at times, and the guy in front of us has thirty items. You have one, and you're like, mm-hmm. why the hell are you an express? And why don't you let me go in front of you? I think we've all wanted to pull out a pen at some yeah, point yeah. and stab that man. But you know, it's it's crazy to think how far people take things it's, when it comes down. Yeah, to for it. something as little as acoustics too. Like I like sound as much as the other guy, but like. Don't know if I'd stab someone for it, you know. I, I'll hear the dude from the back of the room or the front. Maybe not as well, but you know, fuck it. <laughs> Another um, good thing about Comic Con is the fact that all the stuff that gets exclusively released at Comic Con that comes out months before you hear about it in trailers and stuff like that, like Avatar Two, like the mm-hmm. trailers for that, all those viewings, all the new technology that's coming out in the next year that uh, you're going to be aware like, of before anybody else. PAX, too. I mean, like, yeah, it's streamed, but, like, you can be there and, like, talk to the people who made the games and, like, play them firsthand. Like, before, like, pre-beta. Like, you can go there and play the games. Isn't that PAX inspiring, so though, dude? It's crazy. It's awesome. I like that. It's just, you know, with, with Comic-Con, with PAX, because of those opportunities that they create, the tickets are, are super pricey. You know, like, you, you got to pay a premium to get that content. So. Well, it's like when you order a game early. It's mm-hmm. like it's going to be a little bit more money. Yeah, that's true. Well, see, the beauty of pre-ordering is that nowadays, like, everyone wants you to do it. So that way the company gets funding before the game is out, you know. And um, you get perks for that. So you're not really, like, they have, like, the big Fallout package where you get, like, these little knickknacks for buying it and stuff like that, but... Hardcore fans gonna spend that extra dollar they to get will. the Steelbook edition. They There's will. some type of legendary edition that adds more content to the game and also gives them a necklace mm-hmm. or some type of yeah. keychain. Or in that the case is like of Skyrim, the half big a dollar. fucking dragon statue that they give you. That thing's fucking sick. Dude, I'm jealous if you have one of those. I don't I want that. I my buddy bought me the legendary edition of that game, and I got like a steel book that came with it. And I just have it for aesthetic appeal. Mm-hmm. I got Skyrim maps all on my wall, so Hell I can't yeah, complain dude. about people being nerds because I have nerd stuff in my room, but I also have like it has a mix of skating stuff. So if I ever have a girl over, it's not like hey. Yeah, I'm kind of fucked here like dude you got the avatar freaking art right there and that's amazing because that was one of my mm-hmm. fascinations as a kid was i was always trying to be um dude wasn't the element wasn't every kid though like dude it's funny <laughs> i met a spiritualist cool um a spiritualist person she was on my original podcast and uh she was talking about how she prays to the four elements like earth wind fire and all that it's like good for her 
it's it's crazy to think about that mm -hmm. because like you know you're you're doing that i'm like i always think of when i was in the pool and i would swish water around to try and be a water bender mm -hmm. you know try and control the fire by sticking my hand close to it thinking i could control the flames mm -hmm. and realizing i'm just an idiot kid that's <laughs> fantasizing about something else it's dude, like dude never doubt the imagination man you can't lose thing. your inner kid. That is the best thing you can do. Some like, people do. You cannot it's... lose that inner kid. That's the best thing you can say about this podcast. Do That's not... the main thing it should come down to is don't lose your I'm inner kid. I'm telling you, sounds dumb. Watch the new Winnie the Pooh movie, Christopher Robin. Beautifully, A beautiful message, exactly what you just said there. Just laid out in a movie. It's so fucking good. Like, I'm the type of dude that watches like Fight Club and shit. It's just... Like, that movie had that message where it's like, never lose your inner kid, never let people manipulate you into losing it. It's fucking it, I mean, it's also an, uh, it's a, a nostalgia thing, too, because you grew, oh, yeah. up, you grew up with the stories of um, Winnie the Pooh, so it's like... Mm -hmm. But, yeah, overall great message in that, so everyone listening, encourage you to watch it. So, is there any uh, tips or any motivation you can kind of give someone that wants to go and experience their first Comic-Con? The motivation is, like, if you like anything at all, look up to see if there's a con. And if there is, the people that... There's hundreds, thousands, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, depending on which one you go to, that like the same thing. You can be yourself. You don't have to put on a mask for anyone else. And um, if you come find me, Chris Rourke, I'll have a badge. I'll give you a shot. You a shot at what? I normally do vodka there. Every time. You I just, drink a lot. I, you, I'm literally getting this... <laughs> I drink a I lot. Drink a lot. <laughs> I'm literally getting the sense, like, that Comic-Con is the place to get fucked up and have fun, which is, like... For me, it is. What's different from a fraternity? You guys are all in it together. Mm -hmm. It's like... Not to quote High School Musical, but you guys are literally all in it together. Like, yep. you're all there for the same thing. Whether you're getting different uh, experiences out of it is completely up to you, but... I had the white, like, you know, Kurt Cobain's old, like, clout goggles that he had, the, the circular ones. I saw these, or do. Yeah, yeah, so I had those on, and every person with white glasses I came by, even though I was pissed drunk and, sl and like, slurring my words, I'd be like... Trade glasses real quick. <laughs> They'd all do it. Like, like the people there are so, like, willing to just do, like, chill yet weird things with you. You know the it's one thing just... I would want to go there for? Huh. Not only being free and dressing up as, like, a, like Leonidas or something, but going there and do kiss or slap. Kiss or slap. You just hold the camera up in selfie mode and go kiss or slap to whoever and you're talking choose. to. And they choose. They choose. That's a good idea. Dude. That shit, you're dressed up as Leonidas on, with a six pack. Like, you know how many? Yeah, uh, I'm planning on doing a Skyrim cos, like Nord cosplay, uh, with with a group of people. Okay, if you go doing a Skyrim we, one, we're going. That's what I told I'm, you was gonna convince you, my dude. No, I told you. You don't I'm, even need to convince me. I'm going to the I'm going to the um, Magfest, right? That's the video game and music one. With my boys, we're all going. We've all created a Discord. We're all going to the gym, and we're gonna work the fuck out so that way we are like big, by the time we go there. I don't and we're really gonna be do big. I'm like being ripped. Well, ripped. I'm trying to get. I'm already at that it. level, so it's like yeah. if you guys need help, dude. I know where you. I know what gym you go to. You like, know. <laughs> you see me there. Yeah, yeah, but like we're just. You literally trying to... asked me one time, "Do you sleep here?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I got a yeah, pillow like, upstairs and a blanket. We're just trying to do that, and then like, go around and do shit like that. Because I always do stupid shit to get myself talking to someone there. You know, I don't like know if I would want to dress up as like a Nord or like the guys like with the basically how the front cover dude is, the Dovahkiin type look. Yeah, well, or do I want to dress up as the like a mage or something? Because I like the hoods, and I've always been fantasized with magic. It brings us back to those. Yeah, how how video games can take you to literally a portal to another, a uh, different reality or a different universe. Mm -hmm. like, literally, you can go to space one minute, be playing in a you know Vietnam in the next minute, or you can be going into some type of old school like that's where a lot of my fascination with history comes from it really unlocks the true passions in somebody it, i believe it everyone's a gamer at heart we're, aren't we just playing a game and the game's called life in a way yeah not the uh, board game that's i a piece actually of shit, like but i'm talking about like every single computer system out there you can lay out as a game the human body is a game surgeon when they when they perform surgery it, people are like oh you know it's not fun in games dude a game is literally just something that you play and you try to achieve to win, you know? And yeah. it's like, surgery, 
I would love it if a surgeon was like, I'm going to beat this game when he's doing heart surgery on me. That means he's going to fucking win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's motivated to win then. And it's like the human body, you can, you can lay it out as a game. It has a set of rules. You can do X amount of things, and you can achieve what you want to achieve with, like, you... If you if you broke down your body, what you're doing with it, you're like, I want to work out. I want to get I want to get cut. I want to look good, right? That's a game. You've set your parameters. There's rules to it, and you want to achieve something to win it. At sports games, people are you know it's, everything is a game. It, it, <laughs> I, I, I'm at. breaking down what you're saying into two things. One, mm-hmm. you've got to have a plan in life. You got to have a plan in everything you do, mm-hmm. whether that plan goes exactly as planned or whether it has Tentative. you know but you got to think those little random things that don't go as planned they're sometimes beautiful in a way i love tentative plans because of that i always lay out very vague things like like right now like what i said we're gonna do a skyrim cosplay we're gonna go to the gym right whatever happens in between like those are the two big points i don't have any plans to do either of those other than those actually the show up to the gym and get Skyrim cosplay. However I plan to do that is going to be in the moment. And however it works out, as long as you make it to the cosplay, right, mm-hmm. it's all that really matters. Exactly. You and go to the to gym. Be, well, you don't have to be super <laughs> bulked up. You know, a lot of times, like, conflicts come up, like, you know, your car's not working or something. And yeah, you get yeah. to the gym. But as long as you make, can make it to that overall ending up final goal, then mm-hmm. it's just like you can take that aspect into life. If you end up making it over to that final goal, that's final it. whatever thing that's in the, in the long end of the tunnel mm-hmm. you know that's the whole point of the i guess the show in a way yeah exactly yeah the truman show yeah the truman show we're all being watched by the <laughs> fbi <laughs> well god I've, i i gotta remember the quotes for like the product placement that they do in that so that shit is so fucking funny it's just, like she holds up a coffee cup or a coffee can and she's like buy it <laughs> and it's he's, completely he's oblivious like, it's like what <laughs> the fuck yeah it's fucking great, man. So it's crazy to think, and I want to end on this. That that is the door opens. Don't worry about it. Okay. Well, thanks for letting me. There's a ghost in the house. <laughs> um, the question I have to end with this: Do you think we're all in a simulation? Of course. And actually, I was having this conversation with someone else the other day. Um, you know, did you know that light, if you observe it, acts differently than if you don't observe it? So actually, it's a quantum theory, so we don't have proof of it yet, but scientists, when you observe light, the molecules act differently than if you are not observing it and you have something like a computer observing it, let's say. So scientists look at light right there. I'm looking at light. It's going to act differently than if I do this, right? Those molecules acted differently because neither of us were looking at them. Why is that? I have a theory that quantum is the reason, is the key to figuring out that we are in a simulation and it is the way that we'll see how the rules are set up that we can't quite understand yet. Maybe it's fourth dimension, but uh, I'm thinking mainly that that Well, I found another episode we can work on, on quantum physics and stuff. I'll have to do some research on that before I even try and dive into that world because I'm still I don't even know how my freaking light turns on when I flick the switch. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, well, get, I'll get back to you on mm-hmm. that one. Uh, my bad viewers. I know this is about cons, but um, I, I hear an opportunity to plug my my quantum theories. I'm gonna do it. You hear an opportunity to, to seem smart. You're gonna you're gonna show it off, dude. I, you're a genius. I get, Shut up. I get excited when people ask me these questions. So I'm sorry. That's well, well, it sounds my like bad. we got a good conversation going. Oh yeah, so. yeah. So do you feel like we wrapped up Comic Con in a good way? You know, costume play. I mean, it's a it's a good event. So I mean, like that whole conversation we just had was like there are so many things to think about. I don't have to go back and listen to it, but it's like there are so many aspects of it that you know once you just educate yourself a little bit on the factor of you know just understanding costumes mm-hmm. and being wanting to play play make believe in a, a layman's terms. Like, oh yeah, there's a fun passion to it, and you realize you know. If someone wants to take that down, don't be that person because there's no point. It's a modern art form, you know. Also, everything's art, just, bro. It, it is. It is. And um, yeah, if you don't, if you had the like desire at any point, like you saw these things and you wanted to go, the best way to do it is find in your friend group people who have even slight similarities with you. Like some dude plays video games every now and again. 
you can convince them by just showing them cosplays and being like, you can dress up as anyone you want, dude. There's a place <laughs> you know? for us. Like, there's, there's a, a place I know us. that you might not act like this when we're in groups of people. I don't either. But we can do this, man. <laughs> you know, just rent a hotel room together. Go for it. You know, don't, don't be afraid. Everyone there is nice, you know. So, any doubts, get them out of your head. Just go. And if you're at KatsuCon, Otakon, or MAGFest, hit me up. Facebook's Christopher Rourke. Do it. Shout out to Christopher Rourke and not the podcast. Thank you. Oh, yeah, by the way, fill in the blank's going to be there, so you better come. Not just fill in the blank. Out of the blank as well. Oh, my goodness. Look, he <laughs> name dropped the main one. Dude, multiple personalities at one con. The guy who's who, the the Robbie who. I don't even want to get into mental disorders. That's a whole other episode because I can <laughs> shoot off so hard about that. People don't even know that Princess Leia has a mental disorder. She deals with bipolar depression with thoughts of suicide. I'm leaving it on that. Everyone's gonna be like, "What? That's a real thing." Yeah. Uh, okay. She was in a let's go back video. to this. She was in a therapy video that I watched for my class for abnormal psychology. She was in the video. She talks about having everything and being like famous and stuff, and. She can't see the inner light in it because she's just miserable and too energetic all the time. Or she just she couldn't even see that she was Princess Leia. She cares sometimes. What? Mind blown at the end of the podcast, killing it, and I'm leaving you with a cliffhanger, much like Jeopardy, where they show the commercial right before the answer on that asshole. God damn.